हर कृष्णा हर कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि बो ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया Where are you in the Bhagavad Gita? Which chapter? Do you know? Are you reading Bhagavad Gita regularly? Huh? Which chapter? Chapter 4? Sorry? Oh, text four is done already. Chapter four. Chapter four. Okay, chapter four, text number five. All right. So, Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Bahuni me vyatitani, Janmani tava charjuna, Tani aham veda sarvani, Natvam veta parantapa. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Bahuni me vyatitani, Janmani tava charjuna, Tani aham veda sarvani, Natvam vedha parantapa, Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Bahuni me vyatitani, Janmani tava charjuna, Tani aham veda sarvani, 
Natvam Vetha Parantapa Chan? Anybody? Shri Bhagavan Vacha Shri Bhagavan Marajis, anybody? Shri Shri Bhagavan Vacha, the personality of God had said, Bahuni, many, me, of mine, Vyatitani, have passed, Janmani, births, Tava, of yours, Cha, and also Arjuna, O Arjuna, Tani, those, Aham, I, Veda, do know, Sarvani, all, na, not, twam, you, veta, no, parantapa, o subduer of the enemy. The Personality of God had said, many, many births both you and I have passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot, o subduer of the enemy. Purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda. In the Brahma Samhita 533, we have information of many, many incarnations of the Lord. It is stated there, Advaitam achutam manadim anantarupam adyam purāna purusham yavano vanam ca vede shudurlabha madurlabha matma bhakto Govinda Madhi Porsham Tamaham Bajamin. I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda, who is the original person, absolute, infallible, without beginning. Although expanded into unlimited forms, he is still the same original, the oldest, and the person always appearing as a fresh youth. Such eternal, blissful, all-knowing forms of the Lord are usually not understood by even the best Vedic scholars, but they are always manifest to pure unalloyed devotees. Karod Bhuvaneshu Kintu Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paramapumanyo Govinda Madhi Porsham Tamaham Pajami. I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda Krishna, who is always situated in various incarnations such as Rama, Narsimha, and many sub incarnations as well, but who is the original personality of Godhead known as Krishna 
and who incarnates personally also. In the Vedas also it is said that the Lord, although one without a second, manifests himself in innumerable forms. He is like the Vaidurya stone which changes color yet still remains one. All those multi-forms are understood by the pure unalloyed devotees, but not by a simple study of the Vedas. Vedeshu durlabham adurlabham atmabhakto. Devotees like Arjuna are constant companions of the Lord, and whenever the Lord incarnates, the associate devotees also incarnate in order to serve the Lord in different capacities. Arjuna is one of these devotees and in this verse it is understood that some millions of years ago when Lord Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to the sun god Viveshwan, Arjuna in a different capacity was also present. But the difference between the Lord and Arjuna is that the Lord remembered the incident, whereas Arjuna could not remember. That is the difference between the part and parcel living entity and the Supreme Lord. Although Arjuna is addressed herein as the mighty hero who could subdue the enemies, he is unable to recall what had happened in his previous, in his various past births. Therefore, a living entity, however great he may be in the material estimation, can never equal the Supreme Lord. Anyone who is a constant companion of the Lord is certainly a liberated person but he cannot be equal to the Lord. The Lord is described in the Brahma Samhita as infallible, which means that he never forgets himself, even though he is in material contact. Therefore, the Lord and the living entity can never be equal in all respects, even if the living entity is as liberated as Arjuna. Although Arjuna is a devotee of the Lord, he sometimes forgets the nature of the Lord. But by the divine grace, a devotee can at once understand the infallible condition of the Lord. Whereas a non-devotee or a demon cannot understand this transcendental nature. Consequently, these descriptions of the Gita cannot be understood by demoniac brains. Krishna remembered acts which were performed by him millions of years before, but Arjuna could not, despite the fact that both Krishna and Arjuna are eternal in nature. We may also note herein that a living entity forgets everything due to his change of body, but the Lord remembers because he does not change his Satchit Ananda body. He is Advaita, which means there is no distinction between his body and himself. Everything in relation to him is spirit, whereas the conditioned soul is different from his material body. And because the Lord's body and self are identical, his position is always different from that of the ordinary living entity even when he descends to the material platform. The demons cannot adjust themselves to this transcendental nature of the Lord 
which the Lord himself explains in the following verse. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Gara Shri Yata Pada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinapandu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschachyadeshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare so Lord Krishna is responding to Arjuna's question here in this fourth chapter. Lord Krishna is presenting transcendental knowledge and that transcendental knowledge is being inspired by the question of Arjuna. Arjuna very intelligently wanted to understand how Lord Krishna could explain this knowledge to the sun god, Vibhiswan. Lord Krishna, you will remember in the beginning of the fourth chapter, Lord Krishna was describing the history of the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita has a history. You know, and Lord Krishna was describing how in the past he had spoken this knowledge to the sun god, Vivishwan. And then Arjuna is puzzled because Arjuna thinks of Krishna as his friend. Arjuna is thinking, you know, Krishna and I are friends. Among the Pandavas, Lord Krishna would always respect proper etiquette in his dealing with them. He would offer his respects to Maharaj Yudhisthira. Maharaj Yudhisthira was the senior most member of the Pandavas. And Bhima was number two after Maharaj Yudhisthira. So Lord Krishna would respect both Maharaj Yudhisthira and Bhima. He would bow to them. But when he would meet Arjuna, he would embrace Arjuna because they were the same age, they were of the same era. 
And when he would meet the younger brothers, the Nakula and Sahadev, they would bow to Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna would bless them. So that is etiquette. You meet the superiors, we bow before them and we give blessings to those who are junior to us, right? The young people will come, they want blessings from the seniors. So Lord Krishna would observe this culture. But Arjuna is puzzled because Krishna is saying that he had instructed this knowledge to the sun god, Vivishwan. So it inspired Arjuna to question Krishna, Lord Krishna about this and he said, how could you give this knowledge to the sun god? Because the sun god is so much senior by birth than you and I. Arjuna is thinking Krishna and he are the same age, so he's thinking, how could Krishna, who is the same age as me, how could he give the knowledge to the sun god? And so then Lord Krishna explains to Arjuna this transcendental fact that both Krishna and Arjuna and all of us, we have passed many, many births. Lord Krishna said, I can remember all of them, but you cannot. We don't remember our past births. We, but certainly we had some past births. We are all eternal living entities. We have some indication of our past births from the way in which we behave and our different natures which we have. It's not by chance. Each and every one of us have our own individual characteristics. You know, someone's dirty, someone's lazy, someone's very hardworking, someone's very neat and clean. Everyone has their different natures and it's not just by chance. Foolish people say chance, but we say there's no such thing as chance. Uh, we don't believe in chance. There's reasons for everything, there's causes for everything. We don't to say, oh, it's just chance. That is just foolish to try to make that kind of interpretation. No, there are reasons why everything happens. And this, like that, there's reasons why we have the particular bodies which we have today. The bodies which we have and the birth which we have taken in this lifetime, it is not by chance but it is the results of our past activities. By our past activities we've been placed into a particular situation. We're enjoying the fruits of our, or we're suffering the fruit of our work, each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. in, in China they, we will say the, the common expression is Zhong Do De Do, Zhong Gua De Gua. And when we, ex you know, it means if you harvest, be if you plant melons, you will harvest melons. And if you plant beans, you will harvest beans. In other words, you get the result of your work. It's not by chance. There are laws of nature. In Christianity, in the Christian the Bible, they say, as you sow, so shall you reap. So even in Christianity, they can understand this basic principle. It's a, and, and in Hindi language, it's commonly said, jaisa karega, aisa barega. Jaisa karega. You do like that, aisa, you'll get that the, re the reaction will come. 
So we see this, ex this understanding is there all over the world in Christianity, in Chinese, in Chinese culture and in uh, ordinary colloquial language in India. People understand it's not by chance. The things which are happening to us are the results, the, what, we, what we deserve. So Lord Krishna is pointing out that we have had many births. Of course, we are always in the bodily conception of life and we're thinking in terms of the body. We're thinking, I am this body. We identify ourselves with the vehicle. Right? Someone thinks, I am Benz. Somebody else thinks, I am BMW. Somebody else thinks, I am Proton whatever, you know, different vehicles are there. So the same way the body is the, the vehicle of our karma. Mm -hmm. The shitra, the field, the karma shitra, the field of work. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna speaks about this in the 13th chapter, about karma shitra, the field of work. So according to our work, as I was saying, if you plant beans, you will harvest the beans. So we have to understand the body which we have today is the result of the things we have done in the past. And th that is true also with the birth. Of course, a lot of people, they don't like to hear that. And they get very upset even when they have to hear like that. I remember some years ago, uh, Jai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, Radha Krishna Kanaya Ki Jai. I remember some years, quite a few years ago now, there was this one man, he was a manager of the English football team and he got interviewed by some reporter and the reporter asked him about why are some people uh, handicapped in, in, from birth and he said well it's their karma from their past and it was it became a big issue that all people all over the country were so upset that how can he say like this, that, you know, that this poor person, they're born handicapped and he's saying it's the reactions from their past and it became so heated and so emotional that they told this man, you have to resign, you cannot be in charge of the team anymore. And he had to step down, he had to give up his position. People were so upset because we don't like to think that we could have done anything to deserve that condition. Everyone thinks, I'm a good person, I'm a good guy, I didn't do anything to, de to deserve this. It's, it's just some chance, bad luck. And in this way they like to uh, ignore what is actually the fact, what is actually the truth of the matter. People don't like to hear the truth. Lord Krishna is speaking the truth, absolute truth, that we have had many births, but we don't remember these things. But Krishna said, he said, I remember them, you cannot. Oh, people have done a lot of research in these things. There's one famous professor, at least I, I, he's probably no longer on the planet, but his, his name was Professor Ian Stevenson, Stevenson, and he was doing research in 
memories from past lives. And he traveled around the globe interviewing different people who had memories of their past life. And there were countless examples, so many. He, he filled volumes of books with all of the evidence of different people who remembered some traces of their past life. And they had no reason why somehow they could remember these things. You know, it's how somebody was a, a, a young girl and she was remembering something about her previous life that she was a young man and something happened and he, would, he was in an accident and he was talking about his wife and she was in the, she'd already taken birth as a young girl but in pre previous life she'd been married to another woman and she was a man and, and they researched all these things and everything she said was true and there was no way she could know these things but somehow these memories are there briefly and generally what happens after a period of time, they forget. We forget easily. So young children, it's especially common among young children, they, they could remember some things from their past life. But the memories are gone in the course of the present life because the, pre the life itself is so conditioned, we get so much bewildered and caught up in this life, we forget about everything. And the child in the womb, that is also another experience, which is so terrifying, we don't care to remember it. We forget the most painful, difficult thing, but we were all there, we were all in that situation we were within the mother's womb. We were crushed up and cramped and we had to come through the difficult process of taking birth, coming out from the womb, a very painful experience, frightening also. We have been through all of this, we don't remember. In the same way, we don't remember our previous life. But Lord Krishna is pointing out, He remembers, He can remember this thing. Why? Because He has a, a spiritual body. We took a material body, but the Lord, he is, His body is eternal, spiritual, full of bliss and knowledge. So he can remember all of these things. Our body is just the opposite of the Lord's body. Our body is miserable, temporary and ignorant. We don't remember. We don't like to remember even. It would be very difficult for us to enjoy this world if we had to remember the previous life because we, we, we're we're all here to enjoy. We want to enjoy this world. Of course, it's not really our position to enjoy, but we try to enjoy. We want to be the enjoyer. This is our defect. This is uh, the big mistake which we make in the material world, that we're trying to be the enjoyer. But our position is not to be the enjoyer, we're meant to be enjoyed. We are subordinate to Lord Krishna. He is a Purush and we are Prakriti. So all of the living entities, we're all actually feminine by nature. The Lord alone is the Supreme Male and we are all His servants. We are Prakriti, His energy. And uh, living in the material world, we try to enjoy, and of course we meet with failure, we meet frustration, so many difficulties trying to enjoy the material world. And then at 
certain point we admit our own frailty and our own disqualification in trying to be the enjoyer. At least if we become fortunate, we can come to that conclusion. People come to different conclusions. Some people conclude, well, nothing, there's nothing in the world, nothing is real. And they, the, the conclusion is simply voidism, just like in Buddhism or Jainism or like that, these kind of philosophies, they have the teaching that nothing is real and you are not real, you don't really exist and it, uh, everything is illusion. Even Shankaracharya, he quoted Brahman Satyam Jagat Mritya, that the Brahman is truth and this world is all false. So like some people, some different transcendentalists have these ideas. Some people's conclusion is we're nothing, not, we're all void, voidism. And others have the conclusion of the oneness, the sayuja, that it's all one, it's not zero. We're not nothing, we're all one and we're all Brahman. And they will say, I am you and you are me and we are all one. All right? This is it, the oneness. But that is not the Vedic teaching. The Vedic teaching is that we are all eternally individuals. We eternally exist as individuals. But we are taking different bodies from time, time after time. We give up one body and we take another body. The soul needs a body to enjoy. Without the body then we cannot enjoy the material world. So sometimes we get the dog's body, sometimes it's a tree body. You get different bodies life after life. When we are fortunate we come to the human form of life. And in the human form of life, we can be introspective. We can think more about our purpose being here. But still, it is very difficult to come to the conclusion that we're meant to be servants of the Supreme Lord. That we have to hear from the devotees. We need to get that mercy. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita it says, Brahmanda Brahmite Konya Bhagyavanjeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhukti Lata Beach. That we are, as living entities, we are moving through different universes, birth after birth, taking birth in so many different conditions of life. But when we are fortunate, then we contact a devotee. And from the devotee, we get that bija, that seed of bhakti. And that seed of bhakti can help us to understand our spiritual identity and to get us out of this material world. That's the lifeline to get out of the world, right? We're in the well and somebody comes along and throws the rope to us. So you want to get out the well, you have to hold the rope. The, you've fallen in the well, you say, get me out, get me out. And the, the man up top said, hold the rope, hold the rope. And you say, just get me out. You know, if you don't hold the rope, how can you get out the well? That's the problem. We're in the well, we're in this well of the material world and the, the, the devotees coming with the rope, they hold the rope, we'll pull you out. Just get me out the well, I'm not going to hold the rope. <laughs> this is the problem, you see, we're in this situation. It's a helpless situation. We have to help ourselves. 
how to help ourselves. We have to hold that rope and then we can be pulled out of that well. So Lord Krishna is like that. He is throwing the rope to us, giving this transcendental knowledge, reminding us that we have had many births and we'll continue to take many births unless we make proper use of our life in this human form to get out of that well. So we will hear from Lord Krishna as we go on in the fourth, in this fourth chapter, Lord Krishna will explain how you can get out of the well, material world. All right, are there some questions? Yes, Kalesh Prabhu. Yes, it's a good question, right? Why is it somebody will hold the rope and others will, people won't? Is it their karma? Well, we say actually devotional service doesn't come about just by karma, but it's by the mercy of the devotee. If we are convinced, you know, just like if we have faith in that person who's on top, that he's really going to help me, Jai Krishna, Radha Krishna Kanaya Ki Jai. If we have faith that that person on top, that he can really pull me out of the well, then, you know, we'll hold on the rope. So faith in that person, you know, that is an important thing. We have to be convinced that, you know, this, this person on, on top, he's, he's, I can trust him, I believe him, he really wants to help me, and he's given me a good rope, you know, it's not just a piece of cotton which is thrown down, it's not just a thread, you know, the rope is strong enough, it can really hold me. So we have to have faith in the rope, we have to have faith in the person that he's strong enough, he can pull me out. I may have to have some faith in our own self also, that I can hold the rope, that I've got the strength, I've got enough in me that I'm able to hold that rope. So some different considerations are there, you see. We could say uh, that that good, good fortune is there. Oh, sometimes we talk about Agyata Sukriti, Agyata Sukriti, that unknowingly we perform some pious activities. And so if somebody is some, if he has some good fortune, he gets that opportunity to do Agyata Sukriti, to perform pious activities. That is the, the grace of a devotee. The, the kind-hearted devotee tries to give something to some conditioned soul. Just like we distribute prasada and we take prasada and we have some, or we go for kirtan, we take the holy name and we're chanting the holy name and people hear the holy name and they become attracted. Or we give people books, we get them, say, why don't you read this book, I think it can really help you, you know, it can answer your questions. I was in, I, 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 was, I just came from uh, Kuchin, uh, Kripa Sindhu Prabhu put on an interesting Rathi Atra festival there in Kuchin. And uh, the, the parade, the procession itself, we didn't have very many people, you know, we had quite a small gathering on the procession. It was enthusiastic though, and it was nice. And we got to the, we came back to our center, and of course in Kuchin, Kripa Sindhu has constructed a multi-purpose hall at the back of the temple. It's a big thing, a big, big spacious hall. 
you know, like that hall over here where you have managed. It's like, it's about, it's big, maybe bigger than that even. So we had a big program in there and it was all nicely decorated and and somehow, although there were not many people on the procession, when we came to the program in the hall, there were many people. There was a lot of people there and a lot of people had come. And I thought, well, yeah, people come usually, like Sunday program, you know, people come for prasadam. Yeah, come for prasadam. They know what time the prasadam is, you know. They don't come for the Sunday lecture, but they'll come for the prasadam. And similarly, Rathiatras are a bit like that, you know. People know what time the prasadam is, you know. Who wants to go walking for a couple of hours on Rathiatra, you know. It's a rare soul who will come out on the parade and walk for a couple of hours. But coming to the hall where there's prasadam, people will, will gather. And there were many people. And he had a, invited a lot of... Uh, interesting people uh, from the government especially the Sarawak government are very supportive of our of different religious movements you know Malaysia in general is open to all different religions although it's predominantly Islamic but they accept other different religious traditions and in Sarawak the Sarawak government are very supportive and they have one department, they call it UNIFOR, U-N-I-F-O-R, the FOR is for other religions. <laughs> so they have a whole office just to help other religions, you know. And of course, Hindus, Hindus in Sarawak and Kuchin, not very many, very few people, you know, maybe, is it 0.2 percent or something like that? Not a lot of people there, small number, but they respect. And Kripa Sindhu Prabhu's cultivated relationships with the people, and they're very nice. And they're supportive, and the government support. And the government helped not only our temple, but all the temples and all the churches and so on. Of course, Kuchin is a Catholic, a predominantly Catholic religion there. And uh, the government support them, help them, they make sure that their buildings are well maintained, and like that. And so uh, they had this big program and all the different government people came and the chief minister came, one chief minister, one minister with the office and he spoke and the reporters were there and the whole thing was featured in about six newspapers there couple of Chinese newspapers published pictures and articles and then the, the Malay newspaper also published and the English newspaper, you know, very well covered our program, you know, and photos also. So anyway, we, we were uh, talking and the, the minister gave a nice talk, enthusiastic, and then the lady who was in charge of UNIFOR, she also spoke and she was very nice and, and she said, I've never been in a Hindu, an Indian temple before or an Indian program before and I wanted to dress for the occasion and she got on special like Punjabi dresses, you know, they gave her, some, somebody gave her this Punjabi dress, you know, to put on and she said, I've never worn anything like this before, this is all new for me. <laughs> But very, very nice, you know, very open and uh, enthusiastic mode. And there was one young man came to, uh, uh, you know, we're speaking so much about unity. So when I spoke, I also spoke about unity. And I said, Srila Prabhupada inaugurated this Krishna consciousness movement to create unity and harmony among people in the world to bring everyone together in God consciousness. You know, we're not a sectarian religion. We say we're non-sectarian. We accept all religious traditions. And, and, and the, the real unity, I told the audience that real unity is only possible on the spiritual platform. 
you have to come to the spirit. On the bodily platform we'll never have harmony or unity. There will always be conflicts of interest and differences between people, you know, all different, what to speak of religions or colors or creeds or nationalities. So many conflicts are there. But on the spiritual platform there is unity and there on the, only on the spiritual platform is harmony actually possible. And we have to come to that spiritual platform. So I was encouraging people like that in this way about our Krishna consciousness movement that we are open to everyone and everyone has a place. And afterwards this one young man came to me and he was actually from the Baha'i. <laughs> and he was actually the speaker the, the ch in charge of the Baha'i faith there in, uh, in Sarawak. And so he was very nice and he had questions. And so I got a Bhagavad Gita. I asked him, have you ever heard the Bhagavad Gita? He said, no, I never heard of it. And I said, oh, let me get you a copy. You know, I, said, I got a Bhagavad Gita and I sat with him and I started to show him about Arjuna's dilemma in the second chapter, text number seven, where Arjuna is saying that now I am confused about my duty and because of my silly weakness I'm, I'm not able to understand what are the real principles of religion and I'm now your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you, please instruct me. And he said, oh, this is wonderful. I've never heard anything so powerful, such a wonderful statement. You know, he was really, you know, he really was overwhelmed. He thought it was so like, wonderful. He said, I could, you could base your whole life around this, you know. And then I was showing him different statements from the Bhagavad Gita and he was, he was really impressed, you know. So it was, it was nice for me as well. Because we always think, you know, everybody knows Bhagavad Gita, and, but actually not everybody does know. There's so many people, so many people there, and so many people waiting to get Krishna consciousness. And of course that's why we put on these programs, that's why we do things like Rathi Atra. We want to make propaganda and, you know, and invite everyone to come and take part, try to bring people from all different walks of life, all different races and community, bring them all together and experience real harmony together in God consciousness. So this is, uh, this, this is our thinking that we want to, open, our doors are open to everyone. You know, come and hear, take part. We don't discriminate against anyone. I was in Hong Kong and in morning this one young man used to come and he came with his Muslim cap on. Mm -hmm. you know? And he, he was going to the mosque but he would come to our temple every morning and he would sit in our class and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah, we don't mind, yeah. He's welcome, you come in here. Everyone is welcome. Krishna consciousness is open to everyone. Okay, any question? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki.